The reason you are struggling to grow the best plants is because of this. Imagine trying to water a football pitch with a squirt gun. You may be able to wet some areas, but the water will likely miss other spots leaving them dry and parched. Just as patchy watering can lead to uneven growth and brown spots in a lawn, it can also lead to stunted growth and other issues in your houseplants. The solution that solves this problem and provides so many benefits to your plants is bottom watering. And I'm gonna show you why bottom watering is absolutely the best thing to help them thrive. With top watering, we normally grab our plant, take it over to our sink, pour water over it multiple times until we're satisfied that we've given it enough water and merrily put it back in its spot. But have we actually watered it enough? Chances are we probably haven't saturated every area of the root ball and this is why. The root ball of most plants is pretty dense and depending on the size of the plant, pretty big. This means it takes a surprisingly large amount of water to penetrate that large mass of soil and roots so that every area gets wet. The problem is much worse if the soil is very dry. It can become hydrophobic and it then becomes really difficult to water it properly. Imagine you filled a plastic nursery pot with baking flour. How many times do you think it would take to water that pot before all the flour became fully saturated? All day, right? The next time you top water your plant, pull it out from its pot and check out the soil. I'm willing to bet there will be some dry patches. Bottom watering solves this problem perfectly. Instead of pouring water over the top and watching most of it drain away through the holes at the bottom, add water to a cash pot, sit your plant inside and watch as it slowly wicks up the water evenly throughout the soil. It's this wick action that really is the game changer. Provided you add enough water to the pot, all the soil will become evenly saturated and all the roots will get their drink. The great thing about bottom watering is that it encourages deeper root growth. Since I made the switch three years ago, I've noticed that the roots of my plants tend to be concentrated at the bottom where the water tends to be. Roots aren't stupid, they will go where the action is. It's just like why you won't find many whales at the top of the ocean. Why? Because this isn't where the action is. A whale will dive to depths of over 2,000 meters in search of large schools of fish for it to lunch and roots will dive deep to get their food and drink. So why is this important? Having consistently wet soil at the top means roots tend to grow more vigorously near the crown of the plant with a potential to choke it out. With bottom watering they tend to grow safely away from the crown of the plant. So bottom watering means that the lower part of the pot is wetter than the top. You can often control this so that the top two inches remain consistently dry. But why would you want to do this to make your plants less hospitable for the world's most annoying creature the fungus gnat it stops fungus gnats turning up and thinking that you've laid out the red carpet for them there are two things these pesky buggers love fungus to feed off and wet soil to lay their eggs if the soil is dry they will turn around and find somewhere else to go you might think having a dry top couple of inches of soil will be bad for the plant but it really isn't as long as the majority of the roots near the bottom of the pot are getting their drink it really doesn't matter if the top is dry one of the best ways to have happy plants is to keep the foliage free of mold and disease the best way to prevent black mold around the windows on walls of our homes is through prevention rather than cure it's much easier to stop the problem by reducing condensation in our homes than it is to treat the walls after the problem is spread this is exactly the same for our plants and the best way to do this is to not allow the leaves to get moist wet leaves in a warm stale environment with little air changes such as in our homes is the perfect recipe for fungus to develop this can be tricky with top watering especially if you're heavy-handed with the watering can it's inevitable that some splashback will occur on the leaves closest to the soil bottom watering is the perfect foil for this add the water to the cash pot and then place your plant on top splashback is perfectly avoided. It also tends to be much less messy. I've lost count of the number of times I've added water to a plant on a windowsill and watched as the water and dirt overspills and goes all over the sill and onto my carpet. This is particularly true if the soil is compact or hydrophobic with water skidding off the surface and running over the edge. Bottom watering allows you to control this so much easier. This isn't to say that water definitely won't spill over the sides of the tray if you overfill it 
where if the part is not level, but at least you can easily see how much you're adding and stop safely when it gets near to the top. Bottom watering is also much more efficient. It actually reduces evaporation by providing water directly to the roots of the plant at the bottom of the pot, rather than pouring water over the surface of the soil. A large bowl of water will evaporate much quickly without a lid, and you can think of your plant as being the lid to the pot you've just added water to. When you water your plants from the top, the water may sit on the top of the soil for some time, and as the water sits, it begins to evaporate into the air. This can be especially problematic in dry, arid climates where water is scarce. With bottom watering though, the water is absorbed directly by the roots and there's less opportunity for the water to evaporate from the surface of the soil. This means that the water is used more efficiently by the plant and less is lost to evaporation. You might think that bottom watering can only be done for certain plants and not those with shallow root systems. I get lots of comments asking me about young plants that have not developed large root systems yet and whether they should continue with top watering or not. A snake plant, for example, tends to have shallow roots located near the top of the soil. I bottom water all of my plants regardless of size, age or how big the root system is. The key thing to remember is that the soil soaks up the water from the bottom like a sponge and spreads to the majority of the soil. Water will always spread. Imagine grabbing a sheet of plenty and putting one corner in a puddle on your countertop. That water is going to quickly spread to the rest of the sheet and soil will act in the same way. Sure, it's going to be wetter near the bottom, but the rest of the soil will be moist too and this will be good enough for your plant. Don't assume that bottom watering can't be applied to succulents or cacti because they prefer dry soil either. When the time is right to water them, it really doesn't matter if you water them from the top or bottom. They're still getting access to water that they can use to then top up their leaves and stems with. The thing that really stopped me top watering my plants is I'm just too lazy for it. Best practice is to take each of your plants over to your sink area and drench the soil multiple times to give it a good drink. It's much harder to do this when you water where your plant lives. When you've got a growing collection like me, you'll find yourself getting more than your recommended daily steps as you go back and forth to your sink area. This may be no bad thing for your health but it is pretty time consuming. Instead fill up a large 6 litre watering can like me and easily add water to the cash pots without messing around. It's much quicker. Whenever I mention bottom watering in my videos the number one question I always get asked is how much water to give. The concern is that you add water to the cash pot and it's either not enough or too much. You're either not giving the roots an of a drink or your plant is sat in standing water. A rule of thumb I usually go for is to add about a third of the volume of the pot of water. If the plant soaks this up immediately I add the same volume again, it's clearly very thirsty. I then check the next day to see if there's still water in the pot, if there is I simply discard it. You don't need to worry about your plant sitting in standing water for a single day, it takes much longer for root rot to set in. And trust me, once you start to get more experience with bottom watering you learn how much water each of your plants need at a time. For example I know that my large peace lily tends to be on the thirsty side so I add a little bit more than a third of the volume of the pot. This hydrates the roots perfectly fine and I've got to the point where there isn't standing water the next day anymore. A valid argument against bottom watering is the build up of salts and minerals in the soil because water is not being flushed through the soil. As water evaporates it leaves behind dissolved salts and minerals which can build up a over time and create a crust on the surface of the soil. This is exactly how sea salt is made after all, by evaporating seawater to leave behind salt crystals that posh cooks use in their cooking. While this problem is a little exaggerated, it can be more of an issue if you're in a hard water area, in which case you probably want to flush through the soil every couple of months. To do this, you need to keep your plants in pots with drainage holes and in this video here, where I water my plant every day for a month, I show you why this is so important so make sure you click on the link and watch it next.